So welcome everybody back to the Crystal Power Radio Show. And if you want to understand what the Crystal Power is, check out the linked videos in my uh, channel. And they are under the playlist called uh, Inspirations for this channel. And you'll understand more about the nature of the crystal liquid structure that is our body and what that all means. My name is Crystal as well. And my guest today is Terrell with uh, Project Black Star and uh, his YouTube channel is Terrell Black Star. Like I said, check it out, subscribe. Um, reason I have Terrell on today is because about seven years ago in 2012, I became aware of uh, the Black Star, as uh, Terrell likes to call it. Some people call it Nibiru, Planet Nine, Planet X. There's different names for it uh, circling around the internet at this time. I was driving down the street and it was a kind of odd day. It was foggy outside or I can't even say foggy. There were really low hanging clouds and through the clouds, I kept seeing two suns and um, I was rubbing my eyes and I was, I was driving at the same time. So I was having a hard time. I pulled over and I looked at it and it kept looking like there were two suns in the sky. And um, although I thought that maybe this was just insane and that since then I've read that you cannot actually see the planet from planet earth nonetheless I saw these two suns and I had to research what I was looking at I found Earl's work and right away I connected to that because he was being very thorough in his research he was showing how the earth is actually speaking to the fact that this planet is in our solar system he was showing the reaction of other planets in our solar system to the vicinity of the black star within our solar system and uh, he's been tracking it and tracing it for the last seven years as far as I know I'm looking forward to finding out more about it in my conversation with Carol today welcome to the crystal power radio show thank you for agreeing to interviewing with me today yeah, thank you for having me. You're you're right on topics. So, uh, the, the, in asking the same things that many of my subscribers ask, I'm I'm happy to help you to uh, to uh, see to understand more about what's really happening all around us. So, to start out with, I'd love you to talk about how you first became aware of this, how this came into your line of vision, how you you know tuned into it, and then how you started looking into it and um, really putting your analytical skills um, and research skills behind figuring out what was really going on. Okay. Can you speak to that a bit? Sure. The, um, my skills were developed greatly by decades of research of scripture. And like you know, that uh, with Wormwood and the earth shaking uh, like a drunkard and, and destruction coming suddenly, it's in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after my book was written, The Mystery Explained, 2005, then actually began, uh, <laughs> felt the, the pull from God to understand 9-11. I saw, I've watched a documentary, had written this book, and it took five years to resolve 9-11. Right here on my website, you'll see the three sections, Scripture, 9-11, and then Project Black Star, because they're all rolled together. And I developed more of my research skills, I'm a, a keyword guy, keyword analyst. Uh, looking at the use of terms in scripture where they appear where they do not appear same thing with the 9-11 documentation the the 9-11 commission report the word explosions is never used one time the mm -hmm. singular term is used six times you know that's the way my brain works and with the use of faith and grace and where they are where they're not in scripture so once that book was written on 9-11 we know exactly what happened who did it and everything and, and name out the names then the the discovery of the ellen and comet happened December 2010 okay just finished writing that book that summer and then this discovery was made and Ellen and backwards is 9-11 so here I'm, d I'm doing all this keywording for uh, to solve the 9-11 case and then this Ellen and comment 9-11 backwards gets discovered the guy who discovered El Leo uh, Leonid Ellen uh, Leonids are November um, meteor storms Mm -hmm. Okay, so the perihelion date, the, the date that this object got its nearest, reached maximum velocity, and when it was nearest the sun was on 9-11-2011, exactly 10 years to the day after the 9-11 attack. So the keywording of the documentation lured me in, and then we discovered the 188-day cycle. I talked with, uh, uh, communicated six times with Minster Armour Bosich. He, he wrote the plus six seismicity paper that has Ellen in on his 
it, it's in his work going back in time. He discovered a seismic pattern going back to the 1960s. So talking with him, keywording, I joined two astronomy groups, one at PayPal, I'm PayPal, I keep saying PayPal, at PalTalk, and then joined those groups and then helped, I picked up myself up and began to understand more about what's going on. We discovered the 188 day cycle, which is not enforced anymore. But what that means is when we pass between the sun and the black star, we get a big earthquake like Fukushima. We predict, we had enough data in two months. The, this, this investigation is about to start its 10th year, by the way. It's okay. began in, in January, 2011. So we're, we're uh, in the ninth year, okay. about to start the 10th. Okay. So we had enough data in two months to predict that, earthquake event within four days next year Guerrero we predict within within two days suspicious observers that you're mentioning he helped us reconstruct the data about the magnetopause reversal that happened on March 12th 2012 eight days before Guerrero we tied the mystery Mars dust plume story together and we realized that there's that whatever created that phenomenon had to be that turned around earth magnetosphere for 28 hours it had to originate from a star we knew that it had to originate from a star. A planet can't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even though suspicious observers has kind of walked away from the magnetopause reversal of March 12, 2012, then we knew that it was we're on to something that's very important, and that the investigation just started running. So we mm -hmm. knew that was something going on. I'm not a member of the Planet X movement. Planet X Nibiru movement is a lot like the 9/11 movement that's run mm -hmm. by the lettered agencies. They they work back and forth to manipulate the narrative, false narrative much like the Democrats are doing with Trump right now, manipulating the false narrative all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what got me into it. Then I saw the need to start these five group programs. So I wanted to get up into Arkansas, but I had no means of support. How am I going to do that and be a bricklayer? I couldn't do that. So we, my large group got together and they said, well, if you start a newsletter program, you know, we'll, we'll support you. And that's how, that's kind of how the investigation newsletter programs, five group program all got started back in 2011, 2012. Okay. And I'm, I'm on it today, and this is the, the project I'll be on whenever the Black Star gets here. And right now, it looks, the uh, the projection date, if you go to the website, you'll see it's going to happen in May. We know that much. We know it's, it, if it happens this year, 2020 will happen on May the 17th. We know that too. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know how much more the Black Star is going to slow its inbound orbital velocity. So it could we could be looking at May of 2020 for 2021. All that is laid out for you right here at the website on the in the uh, diagram that you have mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how it started, and that's where we are today. Okay. So um, now, let me write, look at some of my questions. So now, when you say it's inbound, where is it coming from? Where is it going? And how long does it take, from your understanding, to cycle through our solar system? Would you like me to share my desktop and show you the diagram? Sure. sure. Okay. So uh, I kind of lost. Well, here we go. Share right here. And I, so I'm going to share my desktop, and then I'm just going to going to go into that. That's what I was saying to you earlier, that I, if I pull up everything <clears throat> that you need, I'm going to have no RAM. But as we go, mm -hmm. I've got a uh, Black Star position timeline, a Black Star position timeline that is right here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're going to open this right here, and then this will be able to answer your question. Okay. The... Black star, aphelion position, the position mm -hmm. where it is when it's furthest away from the sun is mm -hmm. between the sun and the Gemini constellation. Okay. It's moving. We, we began tracking it here. 8.8 .8 chili quake is here. This is mm -hmm. where the black star was in the solar system when it when Earth came around and passed between the sun and the black star. This is the first date that's on here is February 27th, Chile. Mm -hmm. Then you see Earth goes all the way around once, and then we have Fukushima. We go around again, we have Guerrero. These events were all predicted in advance. The difference started when you see this right here. Mm -hmm. See where they're getting closer together now. Because the, in, the, this object is on a long elliptical orbit. In order for it to give us these 12 degree differentials, the object had to be slowing down in proportion to nearing. Um, black star sun proximity 
In other words, there's a magnetic repulsion relationship between these objects. As it gets closer, I can pull up the article if you want and show you this has been observed in main sequence stars. We're mm -hmm. just dealing with a main sequence star and a collapsed rem remains of our sun's once much larger binary twin. So it went supernova a long time ago. This is the remnant body that's left over. It's coming to, it comes to the inner solar system every 3,600 years. It's expelled to Gemini. It comes back in. When it's, this star is far away, it has a gravitational relationship with our sun, like every other object. Mm -hmm. It's when it gets close, it makes the magnetic portal connection that activates the black star and it has mismatched magnetic polarity with the sun. So it's, as it's coming in, it's mo moving rapidly, but then the magnetic brakes get pulled, put on because it's mm -hmm. like putting two magnets together the wrong way. So mm -hmm. then it starts coming around. So as it's getting closer, it's being repelled. It's slowing down. It was moving 12 degrees per year from 2010, actually from 2004 all the way to 2016, this thing was moving on the 188 day cycle. Mm -hmm. As it was closer, it was slowing down. But when it got even closer, it began slowing down even more. And then everything started getting thrown off over here because now we've gone from 12 degrees to just three degrees that the black mm -hmm. star is moving left in the orbit diagram. So it's gonna reach perihelion position nearest the sun, near Venus orbit path between the sun and Sagittarius when it does. And it's going to cross Earth orbit path at the position. I already have this other program pulled up for you so I can show you. The black star is right now between the sun and Libra. And it's mm -hmm. close to Mars orbit path. So we've been tracking it all the way since it was here. We've been mm -hmm. tracking it every week. New reports. And now it's between the sun and the Libra constellation here. The recent earthquake that happened happened on the 14th when we passed behind the sun. Mm -hmm. The one before that was 121 later, uh, 121 days later on July the 14th. Okay, the mm -hmm. one that we predicted in advance, a year in advance, happened on May the 14th. So we have a, we're in a situation now where this event on the 14th, we reached the 90 degree position on the 14th of August, and we got this backside alignment on the 14th, and we're going to reach this angle over here on February the 14th. We already mm -hmm. know that we're going to have the minimum amount of seismic activity here and here. We're going to have the most on this line. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the second quake right now in the seven quake series. For the last 14 years, Earth passes behind the sun, relative to the black star, and we have a gravitational jolt quake. Then we have an electromagnetic quake. And mm -hmm. then we have five of them that follow, moving through this low period. This right here, mm -hmm. the final one happens in the second week of the 2020 orbit cycle, just like it did. We had the seventh quake on the last cycle. And it's, this is a reoccurring pattern that keeps happening. I can show you here, not with that one. I can show you here in this newsletter what I'm talking about. These are the quakes. This is what I do for you guys every week in my reports. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you the number of quakes that start. I mean, the number of quakes that happen of magnitude. These major quakes, th this right here is from the backside alignment last year. We called these two, Alaska, New Caledonia, Sandwich Islands. This Russia quake was predicted to the day it happened. This Philippine quake was predicted to the day it happened. And this Peru quake was predicted. See, it's in the second week of mm -hmm. the next cycle. That's when we get a gravitational or an electromagnetic jolt. So now we are, we just had our backside alignment quake. We're going to have another one and we're going to have five more. And this has happened since 2014. We know we identified the pattern. We know that it's, that it's happening. And, um, once the third quake strikes, then I'm going to be able to use time differentials and multipliers and from using 2016, 17, and 18 data. And then I'm going to be able to tell you, at least if it works like last year, we'll be able to tell you the day that these quakes are happening in the cycle. Mm -hmm. So is it slowing down as it approaches perihelion? And then just like you can see this uh, in other shots of the Milky Way and planets passing suns and stuff that once it takes off, it almost speeds up leave our solar system right so you will see kind of a a quick turn of our sun and then it starts going outbound it's what right. you're okay it's going to cross earth orbit path it's going to get nearest the sun it's going to turn the sun dark the reason is because the magnetic portal connection between the sun and the black star is going to be at its shortest length the with the um, the internal conduits it's a little bit difficult it's scientific to explain it's like it's like an a giant umbilical cord if you would uh -huh. The sun and the, 
black, the sun and the earth are connected by a magnetic portal connection on the inside, very inside of that. If you just cut it open and looked at it, it would look like tree rings, kind of. Mm. The inside is like red. That's where the active conduits are. They're active conduits conducting tons, billions of tons of subatomic particles coming from the sun that energize, that course through the earth and energize our magnetosphere. Mm -hmm. On the outside of that magnetic portal connection are vacuum, like empty tubes, empty mm -hmm. conduits. They provide insulation. So this is like a giant electric wire. And the yeah. inside is throbbing with energy and it's sending the energy, not just to the earth, but to Jupiter, to Saturn. So that's what powers our magnetosphere. Now the black star is siphoning energy from the sun, which is the reason that the sun appears to be going to sleep. So here, here are suspicious observers talking about that the sun's going into a grand minimum or a monitor minimum or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's not what's happening. He doesn't see the black star that's siphoning energy from the sun. So. Oh. It's siphoning energy from the sun and redirecting it to the planets through a secondary set of magnetic portal connections. So we are not only connected to the sun, we're connected to the black star through a magnetic portal connection. The, black, mm -hmm. the, the solar magnetic portal connection and the black star connection are flip-flopping on the same side of our planet right now. Uh -huh. So the, the, this one, this connection to the sun connects and disconnects on eight minute cycles. And they oh. connect and disconnect based upon proximity. Eight minutes is the amount of time it takes for light to get from here to here. So hmm. you can assume that five astronomical units, so that's going to change the amount five times the amount of time. Hmm. It's going to take about this connection between, it's going to be about 40 minutes. That it's going to stay connected. And the thing to realize as we're reaching perihelion, which the earth will reach perihelion nearest the sun on January the 2nd, January 3rd. Mm -hmm. So at each reconnection, more of those internal conduits are be at becoming active. As we're moving away from it, more of them are switching over to the passive state. Now, that's not a big deal with the Earth that's on a kind of a circular orbit because mm -hmm. it's a, the difference is only, it's very, you know, in our velocities, about 2,000 miles per hour. And so the distance is not very different. With the black star, it's way different. Mm -hmm. So the black star is here, and we're right next to it in May. Mm -hmm. But then we go out here away from it, and then we're furthest away from it here. Mm -hmm. Then we come to the 90, and then we're back next to it in May, you see. So this magnetic portal connection is getting longer and then shorter, longer than shorter. And it accounts for the four well-defined um, periods. Mm -hmm. There are two uptick periods. This is an uptick period, and this is an uptick period. And this is a low period, and this is a low period. I can pull up that diagram if you mm -hmm. would like. But the re that the reason for that is because of the varying amount of energy that we are receiving from the black star mm -hmm. as we are moving towards it. This is an uptick period. And as we're moving away from it, that's a low period, you see? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the way that it works. So that explains also why the, the, we're, we're setting records for warm weather. Mm -hmm. They say the sun's going to sleep. Well, it should be getting colder, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It, the 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18 are the, warmest years in recorded history and mm -hmm. 19 is going to be among them because the sun isn't really going to sleep it's being drained of its energy but we're getting that energy back from the black star giving it to us giving it back to us through a secondary magnetic portal connection mm -hmm. now jupiter was over here on this black star sun center line it was back over here whenever jupiter was right into here it was messing up my near side and backside alignments mm -hmm. also when jupiter was far away fukushima was a nine pointer the, this chili quake was 8.8. .8. Well, by the time Hawaii happened on May the 4th, 2018, it was only a 6.9, mm -hmm. right? So we're having six pointers. The reason is because Jupiter is siphoning energy from the black star. It's right in this neighborhood right here. Mm -hmm. The Jupiter is siphoning the energy. This year we had a 7.5 again because Jupiter is now moving away from the black star. Jupiter moves 30 degrees per year. The black star is moving only three. So the Jupiter is just passing it by. Mm -hmm. It reached the peak of its uptick period in May of 2018. Now it's moving to, into its lull period, like Earth does, moving away from the black star, leaving more electromagnetic energy over for us. So mm -hmm. now it's getting ready to get, we're getting ready to get more influence as Jupiter and Saturn move away even more rapidly. So the nemesis is Jupiter. The nemesis is Jupiter because Whenever it's near the black star, it siphons the energy and disguises the black star influences, mm. right? So now that it's moving away, we're starting to see the full power of it again. And to give you some 
to give you some idea of what was happening when Jupiter was in that position, I want to show you something in this newsletter that's just kind of astounding. Hmm. All these zeros. We had a 7.5 popable quake, and then we went 24 consecutive weeks without a 7 magnitude earthquake on our planet. Mm. We're supposed to have 18 of these per year, 20, one every 20 to 21 days. We're supposed to have one. We didn't have one all this time. And if I go back and show you a previous chart, you have the exact same 24 weeks that we had nothing. <laughs> the reason is because this is week two where you get the jolt, and then you get another jolt in week 26. So it took that much time between the jolts, 26. This period was predicted in advance by me in my video before mm -hmm. it happened. It happened when we had a 7.9 Papua quake on the previous orbit cycle, same exact 24 weeks happened. This right here was a magma wave convergence event that reset the global tectonic volcanic dynamic causing this. Now mm -hmm. here's something else that's really amazing. You want, might wanna watch my video uh, from my uh, Black Star channel called The Week the Earth Stood Still. This right here is The Week the Earth Stood Still right here. See it? Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. earthquake of five magnitude or greater. No mm -hmm. sixes, no sevens, no eights, and only one five. Now, how in the world does that happen? Look at the averages. You have mm -hmm. up to 45, 53, right? How in the world do you have one? Doesn't make any sense. Suspicious observers cannot answer it. Dutch Sins can't answer it. Mary Greeley can't answer it because mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. understand the magma plume dynamics aspect of this. Yeah, I was this gonna right just here. say, um, don't you think this is a conversation between uh, the portal connections with the planets as well as the swelling? I think you explained it that way. The swelling of the magna magna plume. The black star is having a dramatic influence on the magma plume formation that's growing out of control right now under our feet. The reason that this happened is because the mantle plume connection, the hot spot that comes from the D layer of Earth core that created these islands is now cut off from the islands. Mm -hmm. That's why Kilauea stopped erupting <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that energy went into the magma plume formation that now looks like this. It's growing all over the world. These arms are reaching all around the world. This mm -hmm. is where that connection was made. This giant blob has pushed underneath the United States now. Okay, but the reason this happened is because all of those horn formations were raised. Whenever that mantle plume connection was made, it was gigantic. It started inflating the entire magma plume formation so that they were all raised up. So now when you get deep earthquake events coursing through those buoyancy barrier corridors, the horns are already raised. They produce mm -hmm five magnitude earthquakes that strike at the 10 kilometer depth. This sing singular quake was a 10 kilometer depth quake that struck in China when a new horn, one new horn formation formed in the seven day USGS reporting period. That's why that, or else this would have been a zero right here. So and now, it, it took this amount of time with all, in all these big quakes. I mean, all these small quakes are happening up to 2745 because the leading edge of the mantle of that magma plume formation was right under Hawaii. It was right under, now it's pushed underneath the United States. So there was an, a time whenever Earth could not maintain equilibrium until it got that restabilized. And then the numbers that we see up here start reappearing that we had down here because Earth went through this transition. But this mm -hmm. is also a period where we had only four six magnitude earthquakes in a nine week period. So if, mm -hmm. if you charted this, then it would, sh it shows like a pyramid that's right here with the lack of activity, the lack of activity and the lack of activity because of what's coming from space. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. This is a black star year <laughs> that I'm charting and it's showing not just large magnitude earthquakes, we're able to predict when they're gonna happen, but also long periods with no earthquake events because the driver that the influences, that the black star is influencing is that magma plume formation that most people don't even know mm -hmm. about that's mm -hmm. growing on, out of control under our feet. Go ahead. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I was reading on a different channel that they believe that magma plume rising is actually what's causing a lot of these fires in California and uh, things like that is that the actual, the crust of the earth is becoming so hot that all these fires are breaking out. You have an opinion about that? Yeah, I can show you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so it's gonna to have to go back over here. It has to do with the crustal uh, thickness. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go right over here and we're gonna open up this one for you. Seismogenic thickness. 
for the region. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to get a hold of this type of information too. That's like they're hiding it. Hmm. So look at the areas where it's where your seismogenic thicknesses are less than 10 kilometers all over the place. Mm -hmm. So and I, I saw a report. Who was it? Oh, they were talking about magma coming from towards Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Who was that? That was Steve Quayle saying that there's a wave that's heading that way. Well, the the ground, the topography here is nothing like up there near closer to Yellowstone. This is very paper thin, paper mm -hmm. thin. The magma is right there. Mm -hmm. So there's no, not even room for a magma, a magma chamber and a reservoir and everything like you have over, uh, with Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Completely different type of situation. So whenever you have to realize that the, the, the uh, seismogenic thicknesses here in some of these areas is only two kilometers. So magma, you have magma underneath there. Mm -hmm. So the what's going moving under this area is, is buoyancy barrier quarter 2a from mm -hmm. my diagrams and as the energy i'm going to pull up this other diagram this is a whoops right here when you get these deep quakes this energy goes through the corridor reverberates against this wave it's a rebound it's what it is mag wave rebound and then you get coalescence at the terminal end mm -hmm. okay so this push, this push right here came together in the middle of March. This push was pushing in whenever the giant wave came up in here, and I called it in advance in the weeks, in the, the end of June, making my reports. There were strange things happening. Then you got the big 6.2 quake, the 6.4 and the 7.1 quake that struck here from the magma wave rebound. We're in a, mm -hmm. a similar scenario is happening right now, and I've already issued the warnings about this. We're within a two-week window where something big could happen again. Mm -hmm. Right here is, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so what you have here is horn formations that are popped up above the 410 discontinuity level in Earth mantle transition zone. They're popped up higher. So when you get these deep earthquake events, they are harmonic tremors. They send magma wave action up here. It pops these horns up. That displaces the magma supporting the crust. Mm -hmm. So now you have movement of this crust from this push the horns that are sticking up, the horns that are sticking up here, and everything is being pushed this way. So you have, if you could look, stand out here mm -hmm. and look, you know, go down and look across, you'd see the North American Craton 220 kilometers under, mm -hmm. 250 at the northern end, and then underneath that, then you're going to see magma, right? Well, the, these magma horns are pushing, and all this magma is wanting to go in this direction because of the same direction you see these arrows. It's wanting to go in this direction, and you're getting mm -hmm. that upwelling up against the North American Craton, and you can see it. Mm -hmm. Let me enlarge this for you. And this is new activity that just happened after 2013. Mm -hmm. It's not as obvious. Oh, here we go. It's not as obvious this week, but you can. They start. They they generally go at the 10 kilometer depth. These ones I'm looking for are going to be at the 10 kilometer depth. When they happen here, then I'm going to be issuing another warning report. But these mm -hmm. at the five kilometer depth right here. This is the edge of the North American Craton you have an upwelling of the magma from the horns rising. These horns mm -hmm. are rising and then displacing the magma, and then you get a wave that goes across, and it strikes against that North American Craton edge. It rises, and boom, you get the quake recorded right there. This only started after 2013. This was non-existent um, before that. Mm -hmm. So this was only a Baja California quake storm area when this investigation started. Now it's proliferated more and more, and it's covering the entire, the entire U.S. West Coast. Mm -hmm. And the entire ring of fire too, it's pushing its way. It's connecting all of the, across the entire planet. You're starting to see all these quake areas connect. Harmonic tremors, sending mm -hmm. magma wave action going through these buoyancy barrier corridors. That's, these are at the 10 kilometer depth. Rising horn popped up, it displaced the magma and it caused this quake to strike. These quakes to strike at the 10 kilometer depth. That's how we're following the growth of this magma plume formation for the last three years because we get harmonic tremors over there. Now they pop off here and they spread across here and then they reverberate back. The same thing happens over here with corridor three. When the terminal ends right here, the terminal end is right here, right now. The deep quakes we had under, under Japan, they come, it comes down the corridor, coalesces, and then reverberates back as a one giant wave. You get coalescence, consolidation of the wave at the terminal end position. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. problem is most people Suspicious observers, Dutch sense that they don't understand magma plume dynamics. Mm -hmm. Very few people at, at USGS are in the 
small group that under that work with and understand magma plume um, formations, how they work, the dynamics, mechanics of how they uh, rebound, magma magma wave rebound, and things like that. There's almost they're no corridors, right? Because they it's almost like there's these corridors underground. Buoyancy They've, barrier corridors, exactly what they are. Yeah. Okay. So they they run. It's almost like underground rivers of magma, right? That are crossing all. And these the magmas, they are filled with magnetite. When the percolation, so you get this massive explosion from the deep quakes. Well, sometimes these are large magnitude, six and uh, almost seven magnitude. You have to multiply. You have to add. Use a multiplier because they are much more powerful when they're deep down in that pressure. Mm -hmm. On the periphery of these explosions then you have the, the percolation, the bubbling that, that mm -hmm. activates the magnetite. So what's inside the transition zone is glassy type material. What's inside of here is glassy type material loaded down with magnetite. That's what's the reason that the magnetic North Pole moved from the Western Hemisphere to the Eastern Hemisphere is mm -hmm. because of these arms pushing into the Atlantic Ocean that changed the magnetic signature of our planet. The center of the planet is now, it's being moved over and the magnetic North Pole is representing that center. Mm -hmm. So it's, they, it's rushing towards um, Russia right now, even with greater velocity, because these arms, that first picture that I showed you, this was Pacific Ocean Ring of Fire thing. The magnetic North Pole was here. Mm -hmm. These arms go into the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean that changes the center, and now it's moving because of this. The magnetic center has moved over towards Russia. Hmm. It's also raising the Schumann resonance of our planet. All these changes are taking place because of what's coming from space and the black star and what's happening under our feet. We, we can even put the ocean water temps that are record highs. Whenever I show the magma plume formation and show those anomalies, you're going to see that they're in the same places. Hmm. So that warmth that you're talking about coming up through the, the crust, it's happening in the ocean and it's also happening in the land. I would want more data before I'm going to be able to conclude, you know, precisely which of the fires out in California are caused by what's happening with the magma. And right. which are those that are caused by, like, they had a, a fire chief out there that was setting fires for a long time. Hmm. All right. I mean, they caught the guy, finally, but. But it could um, be man-made is what you're saying that some people. Right. There's not going to be yeah. one cause for all the fires. Right. There's going to be some people, it's going to be a campfire. I mean, not mm -hmm. the camp, not the, the, uh, the, na the big name campfire, but it's going to be something like that. Sometimes it's going to be lightning striking. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to be this and that. But I wouldn't doubt it at all if some of it is not magma related there's also the fires we ran it in our interview that seem to be caused by these uh streaks of light coming from space mm. and they saw the same things in other countries so it, we do we did do some porting, reporting on that but generally for me as an investigator then I, then i'm going to look at all the evidence before drawing that conclusion that kind of conclusion you know we'll yeah. let you know that the hypothesis it's a working hypothesis we have some ev evidence but we're not drawing definitive conclusions as yet but there's many, there are many things about this that we are drawing definitive conclusions about mm -hmm. because this has been observed for the last three years and we've got enough, gathered enough data. Yeah, so I, I can tell you're not the kind of guy that wants to speculate a lot about no. anything. And in fact, I'm going to ask you to speculate just a little bit because one of the things that I'm curious about is clearly this planet has come through before and the Earth as you say, testifies to that, that has come, this planet has come through our solar system before and has caused a lot of havoc. And if you want to look at it biblically, that's probably what caused, um, you know, some say that's what caused the flood, um, that, you know, kind of wiped out civilizations that we had to all start from scratch again. Now, that's right. I'm going to ask you to kind of speculate about why do you think that we have completely lost all the knowledge around passage of this planet and that do you think it's intended that way or we really just destruction caused a loss of everything um the, the primary reason is because the thing that i'm sharing with you about the black star this is mm -hmm. god's reset button oh. this is it's not just uh the things that you're describing this is much much more the for example the lifetime span the lifespan of human beings on earth mm -hmm. before the days of noah was in the thousands of years mm -hmm. after noah's flood then it went to 120 until the times of, of days of moses mm -hmm. here comes the black star again to create those earth changes and then people live they don't live to be 120 anymore now they live to be 70 mm -hmm. well when the black star comes this time it's going to go back to people living thousand years old again 
Hmm. So this is God's reset button. In my view, science is going to be advanced another 3,600 years by the time the black star comes again. And they're still going to be mystified by this thing. And we still, and so I specu- I'm speculating that some of the recent reason behind your in-depth research and gathering all this information and recording it is to have a recording for the future of what happened. Is, is there some intention like that behind what you're doing as well? Is, well, hopefully that's the yeah. idea. The thing to realize is that we're dealing with God's stuff yeah. and God knows how to keep a secret. <laughs> So, Clearly, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he, his wisdom is hidden in plain sight. That's what my book, The Mystery Explained, is about. His wisdom mm-hmm. is hidden in plain sight in his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Once you see the pattern, then you can start breaking God's code. The real code that God has concerns three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. They're in the heavens, heaven, and the earth, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're in all the three witnesses in the family, the male, the female, the seed, <clears throat> spirit witnesses water witnesses and blood witnesses once you see the pattern then you can begin unlocking some of these things and those things for me run locked decades ago and i'm looking running this investigation and the, th- the thing that i'm realizing is that we know enough to know that we're not we're not going to know there's mm-hmm. many things that we're not going to know one thing is solar system harmonics the, if you understand a little bit about plasmic cosmology the electric mm-hmm. universe modeling mm-hmm. then jupiter well, the planets sometimes behave like resistors. They sometimes behave, the, the solar system is like a giant molecule, the sun mm-hmm. in the middle, the nucleus. But the planets behave differently depending on their proximity, depending on their positioning, the orientation. So you, you have planets that act like resistors and capacitors. Sometimes they're storing energy. Sometimes they're conducting energy. Sometimes they're a, a, a trigger that reaches a point and, and makes a connection that releases the energy. So these things are always changing. They're, the relationships, the positioning are always changing. When the black star comes in, then it's almost like it's singing a different song with mm-hmm. a different chorus each time it comes in. So that because in the, the lifespans being only 70, there's obviously nobody around for 3,600 years to do it time and time and time again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I do believe if you read Halley's uh, Bible handbook, then it's going to mm-hmm. talk about kings that mm-hmm. ruled for 48,000 years. Okay, and this is before the times of Noah, mm-hmm. in the previous times. Now, those people, I mean, 3,600 years is nothing. So mm-hmm. they're going to be, they were the ones that would be able to write down and have the scrolls and, and the underground facilities and everything for everybody to just go in. Black Star comes, tears everything up, and then leaves again. But the other thing to realize is that it depends on where Earth is in orbit. So in the, mm-hmm. solar, the solar system is a lot like a giant roulette wheel mm-hmm. with, for the Black Star. So... We travel 1.6 million miles every day. And there's, just imagine there's that many pins on this giant roulette wheel. Mm-hmm. So when the black star comes, it crosses Earth's orbit path right here along this 1.6 million mile segment of space. Then the Earth can be right here and have a, a springtime crossing event. Or it can be over here mm-hmm. and, and create a flood, a global flood. Or it can be over here and get a fall time crossing event as it's leaving. So it reaches perihelion, the sun mm-hmm. turns dark. That's what Christ says, Matthew 24, start at verse 29, mm-hmm. right? Or in uh, Revelation 6, 12, the sun turns black as sackcloth. That's going to happen. Thing mm-hmm. is, for a springtime crossing event, the sun doesn't turn black until afterwards. Mm, okay. when, it's a, when it's a November event, then you have this uh, perihelion event where the sun turns black and everybody can see it. <clears throat> oh, Christ okay. is describing a fall time event at the end of the age. Paul is describing how the day of the Lord begins, right? So mm-hmm. these events, the event that's about to happen, that's going to start the day of the Lord, is going to happen 3,600 years before what Christ describes in Matthew 24. So if you want to ask me about Wormwood, you want to ask me about Revelation, yeah. that's going to happen in 3,600 years on the next Black Star Orbit cycle. It doesn't happen now. Oh. We're, we're nowhere near the end of the age. We're at the start of the day of the Lord. Paul writes about how the day of the Lord comes how it starts. And remember the day to, of the Lord is like a thousand years. Mm-hmm. Well, that thousand years, that's an, that's a Greek idiom. And mm-hmm. what it means is it's like when I say, Hey, that could be a thousand years. Well, it doesn't mean uh, exactly a thousand years. It means so long as it takes. And it's only used. In okay. So, so wait, bring some clarity around that. So you're saying, so wormwood, the, the description of wormwood in the Bible and, um, 
they will make a covenant with it. And to me, that just says they know it's coming and they are not, they're just going to agree to hold out and not say anything. They figure they survived. So you're saying that Wormwood and the return of Christ are two different um, events or they go together. Explain that. To me. Well, they are definitely separate events, but they okay. happen almost at the same time. Okay. So I can I can show you on a diagram how that works. That's mm -hmm. in my uh, that's in my book, The Mystery Explained. Okay. Okay. So, we're so going to wormwood go. is the black star, or what you call? No, the wormwood no. is going to be like a giant mountain. It's going to be like a. It's an that's asteroid. Nosed, that's net nosed out of orbit that okay. hits the Earth, which I'm not at all concerned about on this cycle, um, because. Number one, the Earth is a flying target moving 66,000 miles per hour. The object would have to be exactly on the plane, exactly at the moment with us. So we're a moving target, very difficult to hit. And I already know, understand the mystery aspects of this and the prophecy aspects of it. So if it was going to happen, then that's what Paul would be warning about. He's not warning about that. Christ is warning about that at the end of the age. But at the end of the age, Christians aren't here. Members of the kingdom bride aren't here either. Guess who's on the earth? Satan's sons. They're the ones oh. that are not going to escape. So everything's going to turn around. This is the this is one of the diagrams that I'll show you. That is going to help you to develop a picture. Mm -hmm. And there's another one that opened up right behind it. The thing to realize about scripture is that it has two veils. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly built like the, in the shape of a man. It has a spirit, has a soul, and has a body. Okay. It's laid out in the exact um, modeling of the tabernacle of Moses in the temple with the, with the veils and with the furniture and everything. I, I explore all that in my book, The Mystery Explained. Okay. Okay. So here's John the Baptist walking through this veil. He's Elijah, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Okay. The last two verses of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to send you Elijah, and uh, he's going to restore the hearts of the fathers to children, hearts, hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. Here he comes, John the Baptist. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He passes the Holy Spirit baton to Christ in the Jordan River. He preaches the gospel of the kingdom. Christ, now, is he the, spirit, the, the witness of the water, Baptist, uh, John the Baptist? John the Baptist is a spirit witness. He's the one that came before Christ. Spirit witnesses always come first. Okay. Then the blood witnesses and the water witnesses. Okay, Christ comes after him. He's the blood witness. The 12, the, the, we have a thread that runs all the way from Genesis 1-2 of the spirit that that moved across the face of the waters, that's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a thread that runs all the way through the Bible until the Spirit and the bride say, come in Revelation 22. Okay. This is the, the Holy Spirit veil. So if you want a little bit of information on that, then in the, uh, John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, he had to go into the temple behind the veil on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. And that's where he got the Spirit from, the Holy Spirit. That was, it struck him dumb because he didn't believe, but then that's the Spirit whenever... John was baptized in his mother's womb, the Holy Spirit. That's how it happened. Okay. That spirit was with him all the way through his ministry until he saw the Christ and testified he's the Lamb of God. He's the Son of God. And then they baptized him, and then the spirit went with Christ. Okay, Christ kept it, and he said, hey, if I don't go, your helper's not going to come to you. He says, I must go. So Christ goes, and the Holy Spirit comes to the twelve. Then you have the, the, the account of Stephen. The, the Jews are killing Stephen with their own hand. They allowed John to die. They allowed the Jews to kill him, to, to kill Christ. Now the Jews are killing Stephen with their own hand, and Stephen's name means crown. Okay, this is the third strike, and you're out. This early reigns church was cut off. Now the Holy Spirit, go to Acts chapter 13. You see the only place in the Bible where the Holy Spirit talks. The Holy Spirit's talking. It says, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I've given them. That's where this dispensation of God's grace comes from. This is a mystery time that the Old Testament prophets didn't see. The mm -hmm. Old Testament prophets can't prophesy about anything in, within this time today. They don't see how the day of the Lord's coming, but they darn sure see how it ends. Mm -hmm. That's why okay. you, you have a matchup between what Christ says and what the Old Testament prophets say, but it's different with what Paul says. Paul is describing how the day of the Lord comes, how it starts. Everybody else in the Bible is describing how that day of the Lord ends. And here's the other, there's another diagram that I usually post with this one. Out of 80 of them, am I? This is right here. So you're saying Paul right is talking about the arrival of um, Black Star. He is actually heralding in that event. 
with he's, this. He's, that's exactly what he's doing. He okay. talks about how the body of Christ is caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and then he goes on to talk about how the day of the Lord comes. Okay. And he says, you don't have anything to be, be you, you don't need to be told about this, because he visited the Thessalonians in person. And he's speaking about how the day of the Lord comes. But here's Daniel, here's Zechariah, everybody. They're looking over the day of the Lord, and especially the end times, they see very, very well, but they don't see anything in here. Now, God had to do this because his plan to save us through our mystery gospel, mm -hmm. to, to create the mystery body of Christ, our mystery translation to immortality, we're going to judge the world and the angels. None of that was given back here because then Satan would have known what God was doing. God had to trick him. All, all this information that Paul reveals as the quote-unquote mystery, 20 times he uses the term. Peter, John, and James and all the letters bearing their names use the, the same term mystery exactly zero times. None of them ever use the term. Mm -hmm. Okay, Because he's describing things hidden in God that had to be revealed at a certain time. So if Satan and his, his uh, helpers knew about our gospel and we we're going to be raised from the dead, they would have never killed Christ. First Corinthians 2 started 6. They would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. They did that, but then they, God had to raise Paul up and gave him our gospel. In the four Gospels, it's the Gospel of the Kingdom that's being preached. They're not preaching Christ shed blood. He hadn't died yet. Mm. He only died afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Paul's Gospel that we preach is not the Gospel of the <clears throat> Kingdom that Christ preached. It's different. Mm -hmm. And it's made of blood. The other Gospel is made of water. These people are going to be saved by the Gospel of the Kingdom, just like Peter, John, and James were. This mm -hmm. is a mystery time. Paul, and there's where we were back in 2005, and this, we're closer to that today. And the body rapture comes and the black star is coming. It comes here to start it and it comes here to end it. So as for Christians who believe in the rapture, do you, so you're placing the rapture at this passage is when the Christians who are saved will be raptured is what you're saying. Or does that come Absolutely. at the end of the eight? You do? Okay. So that's Absolutely. what you're saying. Okay. Yes. This, it, starts the, it starts this day of the Lord. The most, missed, the most missed trumpet in the whole Bible is in Revelation 1.10. Most people don't even know there's a trumpet there. Mm -hmm. It sounds off behind John. John is yes. standing just inside the Lord's day, and he hears the trumpet. That's the same trumpet of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, and 1, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. It's the same trumpet. It sounds off behind him because he can't see this day of the Lord, just because it's beyond the veil, just like I, I showed you. Mm -hmm. He's standing inside the prophetic day of the Lord. He hears that trumpet, and the day of the Lord just begins. Right there. Okay. So then it's the end of the age before the black star comes again. Okay, 3,600 years apart. That's going to be the reality. And members of Christ's body are taken just before the destruction happens. Just before. Everybody oh, okay, else is, so that's the prophecy of before he comes again. Is that time in between this passage and the next passage is what you're saying. The day of the Lord is in between there, yeah. So everything mm -hmm. gets destroyed here. It's just like God um, tilling a garden. So mm -hmm. he, he purifies it with water and fire, and then he starts over again. You say, well, what about the people that are dead? It doesn't matter how many people are dead, because mm -hmm. Christ can raise them from the dead. I mean, Christ. Elijah, his first miracle was to raise people from the dead. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you look at Scripture, you go to Ezekiel 37, you'll see that there, there's a resurrection there. The whole house of Israel, the bones. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, that's going to happen at the end of the age before we go into the new, in, uh, the new heaven and the new earth. But the symbolism and the first miracle of Elijah. This is going to be a new beginning. This is where Israel's kingdom is going to extend all the way to Euph Euphrates Basin. They're going to restore the temple. Everything and David is going to sit on the throne. Ezekiel chapter thirty-four, start at, at verse uh, twenty-four, right, mm -hmm. and or verse twenty-three, and then mm -hmm. he's going to rule. To the end of the age, until he's destroyed, there's going to he's there's going to be 62 weeks, 62 times seven years left. Whenever he is finally taken out by the Antichrist and those, because Satan and the Beast and the false prophet are all going to incarnate onto this earth as mere mortal men like us at the end of the age, and they're going to be sitting here wondering about the black star coming. <laughs> Except for there's going to be no escape and there's going to be no rapture for them or anything like that. So. Um... That actually leads me to, to my next question, which is, um, I guess I'm inspired by what is said around Wormwood on that, and that is that my assumption is that 
you're not the only person that knows this, that people in high places, you know, know that this is happening, know that this is coming. I mean, they have the technology. I'm sure they're watching it fly inbound as we speak, right? And I, I wonder if you think that, first of all, or if you think even they will be caught unawares, or and if all of these political maneuverings that are happening right now uh, with Trump and everything else has to do with kind of waiting this out a little bit. You know, they know it's coming. So, um, first of all, not alerting anybody to the fact that it's happening. Is right. that intended? And and also, are they kind of waiting it out, hoping that they'll end up with the upper hand once it has come through? I mean, what do you think about all of this? Because I almost feel like this whole circus of, of what's happening with Trump and the impeachment and everything, it almost feels like everybody's just trying to stretch time. Nothing, there's no resolution in sight. Everybody's just keeping on, keeping on this big circus that it's almost like, let's keep the show going kind of thing, right? I don't know. What do you think about all of that? Okay, I can show you the evidence okay. right here. And uh, there's a copy of the Dakota report. It was sent to me by Jim Mars back in 2012. And it's still not available from what I can tell. I should be looking at the, C the CIT. I should be looking at the CIT version. I'm not, I don't know why I'm not. Craig. Craig Rank. This is from my 9-11 investigation. Mm -hmm. this, is, this should be it right here. Uh, Dakota report. It's not Dakota report. I might have to pull up my copy. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Yeah, see, it's a, the Citizen Investigation Team has it on their website. And they say it's debunked. But the, uh, the these guys, I know them all personally. Mm -hmm. dealt, dealt with them when I was writing my book, when I was back doing my 9-11 work. They're lettered agency operatives. But the, the only way that you can get your hands on a lot of these documents that I'm about to show you right here is one of them, is by working with, with guys just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you go when you go down to the, oh, I should open you up my section, uh, my copy. Not very clear, is it? I'm not gonna be able to enlarge it like I want to. Okay. Okay, but, you know, I don't have enough, I have so many windows open. This document, th this document here shows, uh -huh. If we if if we could ever get there, it's it's got the operations section, mm -hmm. all the way down to the bottom. It's the operations section. I want to pull it up because I only want to read just a bit from you, just to show you. It's like four pages of the operations section at the end. Here we go. The turn, the terms NGB-21 or government will be used interchangeably. The purpose of this report is to prevent the execution of Project Black Star. Operations listed here are considered necessary for its execution. Um, Project Black Star culminates in the termination of a large percentage of the population. And it's gonna continue and show you huh, a, a lot, a long list of operations, Operation Center Point, recoil. This is, these, this is all happening right now under the Project Black Star umbrella. It's difficult to investigate because there is a Project Black Star that's a spy, that's a spy plane. And no. that's how they make it difficult, but they know, they have known, don't need to keep, I don't need to keep this open. They have known for, since, well, for a long, long time. In the 1930s is whenever the New York chapter of the Council on Foreign Relations opened up the, the Denver chapter. Mm -hmm. And shortly, that was in 1938. And shortly after that, they, they you know, they, they moved operations there, you know, that the uh, CIA, is there the mm -hmm. operational right, no, headquarters airport. of a yeah. lot of these government agencies is being now focused in Denver, which is the capital of Canamera, Mexico. And that's where the underground arc cities are, is mm -hmm. that's connected to the, the uh, Air Denver airport. Look at the murals at the Denver airport and you see what's going to happen. There are, <laughs> there's, it's right in plain sight. They're showing you what's going to happen. This is where the real world simulation is running where Crystal and I are having a little radio show. Our real mm -hmm. world hosts are in the simulation. Mm -hmm. And they're identifying threats to their underground Arc City program. Artificial mm -hmm. intelligence is running threat assessment, contingency planning, and is now in the executive execution position. And is taking out people right now. I can, I can name you people that have been taken out by these guys. 
Mm -hmm. Right now, members of my team, while I've been running a smaller operation, my group was extremely large, 365 administrators, astronomers, physicists, all kinds, just all kinds of people. And we had to break it up because we were getting too close. We were making too much racket, too many mm -hmm. waves. Mm -hmm. And about the nanofilament replication inhibitor, what keeps the nanos the, from replicating the, their legs, appendages from replicating inside your body. I don't want to go too much into that before we get too many red flags on this uh, Mm -hmm, on, on mm -hmm. what's going on here i do talk about if you go to my website and and dana ashley interviewed me on that topic and i went into some depth you can just click on it and you can mm -hmm. you can check and out that's for this. anybody who wants to pick up on that right so <laughs> yes they've known they've known about it they know about it they already there's an arc city there's an underground arc city program already it's owned by house of rothschild the cfr and the elites mm -hmm. so what you see happening in washington dc is puppets on a stage Mm -hmm. Trump is going to the underground arc city and so is Pelosi and so is <laughs> Jeff and they're all on one team. What yeah. they're doing is they're distracting you from mm -hmm. looking up because they, they only have to keep the lies up for a little bit longer. The black star is coming. Yeah. They know it. And yeah. So that, that's why you ask yourself, Pelosi and Schiff know that the Republicans in the Senate are going to take it over and they're going to admit they're, and they know they're going to lose the case, right? They mm -hmm. already know when they started this, they were going to lose the case. They're appealing the radical left. They're trying to throw mud onto any Republican in any Republican races, which is a little benefit for them, which they they've succeeded in a couple of those smaller races. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're trying to get the benefit, but they know that they're all going to lose, but they're all going to run to the underground arc city. So mm -hmm. if they can keep you from waking up is what they're trying to do. So you're like already in a FEMA camp uh, line. You're already like sheeple, you know, your cattle, you're being herded in. And they're keeping you from waking up. Mm. That's what the Putin and Trump, big buddies, there's no, they're all going to the underground arc city. Even mm -hmm. the Iranians, the elite over there, they've mm -hmm. got their underground arc city program. Mm -hmm. So they're all on the same team. The, the new world order begins after the black star leaves. They know it. Okay. And that's what I was going to say. Invited they are, and we're not. They are ready to start their new worldwide domination once we're coming out of this now how long do you think it'll take for the world to recover from the passage like okay the passage happens where there will be a period of time where the world is still kind of getting out of the fog of everything that's in the tail of nibiru i'm sorry uh planet x they call it nibiru um yeah. but what apparently the tail is pulling a lot of junk with it and will be caught in that i don't know if you believe that theory or not but uh if that right. makes sense to you how long do you think it'll take us to recover from that and do okay. you think their underground bunks will survive because there are other people that say the mantle crust the shifts of the of the earth's crust is gonna basically crush their underground uh, right in other words they built their, their own tombs that's what i heard but what do you think about all that that's kind of what i believe let, let yeah. me just start you at the beginning so you can understand okay. what's going to happen Okay. okay the, the black star, uh, the earth is going to be moving in the month of May uh, towards that 17th through the 20th date. And the black star is going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's going to in the, in the destruction is going <clears> to <throat> begin suddenly. What happens is the magnetic North pole gets, let's just imagine that you, we're sitting on the sun. The black star comes between us and the earth and the earth is spinning at 1000 miles per hour in this direction. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the earth is going to be tipped backwards like this. Oh, okay. Okay. So, it's mag like the, the magnetic repulsion relationship between the sun and the black star is causing it to slow down. Mm -hmm. When the black star gets next to us, it tips, it, it has a magnetic conflict with our magnetic North Pole and it causes the repulsion. Mm -hmm. So this first shift is likely going to be slower. <laughs> it's caused by the black star. Well, then the black star continues moving. Mm -hmm. So the earth is going to be tipped like a top so that mm -hmm. whenever it's on this side, the magnetic North Pole is going to be leaning back that way. Earth keeps turning. And then as it's going by, the magnetic, the earth is going to tip over like a top and it's mm -hmm. going to be in this direction until it moves far enough away. Now, when it moves far enough away, earth's going to be tipped over like this, spinning a thousand miles per hour. And the sun is going to recapture earth magnetic polarity control. Mm -hmm. The sun has magnetic polarity control over a planet right now. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps in the concentration of metals in the northern, the, the land mass, metals, salts in the northern hemisphere is what makes the North Pole the North Pole. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be tipped over. When the sun recaptures magnetic polarity control of our planet, the earth will likely be stood up very, very rapidly. The mm -hmm. thing to realize is so the second shift will be greater than the first one. 
and these ocean waters are going to be sloshing. So up against the the Appalachian Mountains and back down again and up over here and back down again. So some of these people that believe in this, uh, they think that Earth is destroyed by a mini nova off the sun. They are citing evidence of these giant, uh, you can see where the water runs down and creates these giant uh, canyons. Mm -hmm. So they, what they think is the whole side of the earth is emptied of water and then the water comes from the other side. No, that's not, the, that's not what it is. They're wrong. What happens is during this shift, this water, so it's moving a thousand miles per hour. So the metals, embedded, yeah. the metals in the crust cause the crust to follow the laws of magnetism while water obeys the laws of gravity. So because of that move, you're going to have waters because this water is moving a thousand miles per hour. And as things start to move, it's going to want to crawl. And especially look at the funnel areas, mm -hmm. the funnel areas, right? Mm -hmm. This funnel area right here is like an armpit. Mm -hmm. So the water out here is three miles deep. And whenever the earth tilts, then the water jumps right over the Appalachians in the Lake Erie. Hmm. There are no safe zones over here. There's 200 nuclear power plants. Mm -hmm. There are no safe zones west of the Rocky Mountain Ridge. This is where the buoyancy barrier corridors break. Mm -hmm. This glassy type magma fills the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the one of the diagrams that I did pull up for you. That's right here. Buoyancy barriers break. The magma underneath pushes it up against the crust, displaces the rocky magma, and then the breach. The mm -hmm. breach sends pyroclastic flows, dust, ash clouds. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And this entire region then falls. The water rushes in to put out the fire or else this would be a, a global extension level event, extension mm -hmm. level event for the planet. It gets put out. That's why the elite are running underground. And their underground arc city, that's right here, is going to go in, off into the, this giant <laughs> molten mass that's here. Mm -hmm. So we know that the safe zone, the best safe zone, is if you ask John Moore, you ask Ken, who runs one of our survival group programs. He did the research a decade before I did, but we identified this six county area of Northwest Arkansas as the best survival location mm -hmm. in the Northern hemisphere. It's 150 miles about the width of the state of Florida from this liquefaction zone. If this happens in a day, this happens okay. over the course of months. So this is the perfect place to be. You're far enough South. You have caverns. We utilize caverns to be underground. And this is where we have three of our survival group programs for um, newsletter subscribers. Newsletter okay. Subscribers. Talk a little bit about what that is. So now I want you also to distinguish, are you assuming that some people are going to be raptured in this event before this event happens? And then whoever is left behind, I guess you, as, as is popularly said, um, would go to a, a survival zone, um, it could join their group. Is that what you're envisioning? That's or exactly right. Okay. Number one, everybody that is a Christian, a real Christian, doesn't know they're a Christian. And the next thing is everybody, many people that think they're a Christian are not. Mm -hmm. They think they are, but they're not. Mm -hmm. So the other thing to realize is that if you're after the heavenly reward like me, you want the best, then you are warning people about what's coming as a son of light from 1 Thessalonians 5, right? And okay. you're making provision for those that you leave behind. That's what this survival group program is all about. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, I'm a member of a group right there in that where I used to live, close mm -hmm. to where I used to live for two years, putting it together. And yes, I'm a member there. Yes, my stuff will be there. Yes, I expect to be taken. Mm -hmm. Those that are left behind are going to get my stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm standing before Christ and God and getting my heavenly rewards, 2 Corinthians 5, star 10. And, I'm, and, and the evidence that I believed, I, re I saw this thing coming is everywhere. The mm -hmm. diagrams and all the help and the radio shows, everybody can see that I definitely believe this thing's coming. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the, the fact that my stuff's there and other people are being are benefiting means God gives me a benefit. Mm -hmm. So I get the reward for things, good deeds done in the flesh here, warning people and making provision for people for after the black star gets here. So that's how you get the maximum reward in heaven. Our rewards go into our ephod, our chest plate. That gives mm -hmm. us access to the remote regions and into the inner passageways of the corridors of the temple and things mm -hmm. like that. If you have generic stones you're not going to get very far if you have the really good rewards you get to go places right that's how i see yeah. things in heaven and that's how i'm acting accordingly with the uh, survival group program 
Okay. And so what to tell for my audience to talk a little bit about what the survival group program is and how people can become a part of it if they're interested in joining one. And okay. um, yeah, just to get that information out there, because I believe that too, you know, and, and to some degree, I don't know if you think this is true too, but you may, we may consider ourselves Christian, but then there's always a mystery in that too, right? As I mean, I consider myself Christian and saved and a mm -hmm. believer, but then again, there's always an area of out in my heart where I say, you know, that what what do I know? You know, <laughs> what do I know about what that really is? Except for, you know, continuing to try to be be virtuous and this best self we can be in in the law of of truth and 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 you know, but what does that really? Eh, you no, know, until it happens, you don't know. There's no right. Well, it's a faith right. thing. Like it, like it's a faith thing. Yeah, exactly. And faith is uh, it's jumping out onto nothing and landing on something that God put there for you. Mm -hmm. And once you um, develop that relationship and you have trust, then it becomes more than faith. Yeah. But the, you begin as a child, and you're learning to walk. You're skinning your knees up until the time you learn to stand. You walk, and then you learn to run. Mm -hmm. so the developing new nature inside of you is very much like an infant, and so I've been doing it for decades and helping people. You're only going to learn so much too, as long as you're trying to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. Your real, your real growth is going to come whenever you take the make the commitment with God to begin helping other people. He's not going to open up doors for you until you help open doors for other people. In other words, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the further I go in my ministry and showing you guys the mystery explained, the more that He shows to me. And you know, works. I want to say something to that because. I have been following this for seven years now, like I said, and I just came upon it through my own kind of intuition, insight into seeing things around me not looking right. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came on it. And um, it, that it correlated with a lot of biblical scripture as well for me. A lot of things resonated with my discovery around it. It's really hard, especially when you're following this long, right? Some people I know have been following it even longer. And it's hard to maintain this truth as you go forward because a lot of people experience this. I have experienced this from people close to me. Eventually, I had to stop talking about it because nobody wants to hear it. You know, nobody wants to hear that, hey, you know, there's a planet coming into our solar system. It's probably right. going to really create some issues and we need to create a contingency plan around that. And I think that way too, just like you're saying, I'm thinking, hey, maybe I won't be here, but I want to know that my family and my loved ones are safe or they know about it so they know what to do. And um, if anything else, it's there's nothing wrong with having prepared, right, for something like this and having some kind of understanding around it. And a lot of my family members who don't want to hear about it are Christian, you know, and, and claim themselves to be Christian. Yet when I say hey, it's actually in the Bible too, and it, there's no wanting to recognize it. And I understand when I first became aware of it, a huge amount of fear came over me and right. despair. And I'm sure a lot of people have to face that when they first realize this is happening. Um, it's, it's a pretty daunting uh, awareness to have and a realization to have. If you go from nothing, you know, not expecting it at all to realizing this is probably going to happen. It's pretty immense. <laughs> and I'm just right. putting that out there. But, um, yeah. Is. Right. No, I mean, enormously bias yeah. is, is a mental disease that captivates people thinking it can never happen to them. Mm -hmm. And but mm -hmm. like in the days of Noah, you know, or Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, plenty mm -hmm. of evidence that that it does happen. And mm -hmm. it's Paul prophecies that it's going to happen. The destruction is coming, but he's saying mm -hmm. that it's okay. So everything is pretty much self-explanatory here. If you just start reading, mm -hmm. you, there's a newsletter program. It's just two bucks a month fit mm -hmm. for see the, the newsletter as I was sharing with you. I put one out every Thursday evening mm -hmm. for Black Star uh, newsletter subscribers. And also for survival group subscribers. Mm -hmm. So here, I mean, it's really simple. And I'm about to update this subscription video. It's old one, about to update it. Mm -hmm. And that's what these buttons are about. This is Project Black Star. See, this is a newsletter survival group program. These are the premium programs. It's just 50 bucks a year. 50 bucks a year, not a month, a year. That gets you a survival group. Um, and newsletter subscription. So you have a Dropbox folder link, you access my newsletters, mm -hmm. you get access to my books in PDF form, my book, my 9-11 book, 
the PDF is in this Dropbox folder for you. There's mm -hmm. tons of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you if you don't want to be in the survival group program, you just want a newsletter program that's just $25. So the $25, same thing with the Christian program. If you just want the newsletters, $25. If you want me as your tutor, so you're, we're, we're corresponding back and forth. You have questions on this and that. You're reading my book. This newsletter is where I go I beginning at the beginning of my book, The Mystery Explained, and give you line-by-line -line commentary. That's mm -hmm. the, the uh, mystery report that comes out every Tuesday. So this is a separate newsletter program for Tuesdays and for Thursdays. That's the way that the new system is. This one's just starting. I'm working on newsletter one right now. Mm -hmm. Just getting off the ground. And then uh, with this program, you, we're going to have a chat room like well, I used to have in the old days. You're going to be mm -hmm. given the password. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to be able to show up there on Tuesday evening, 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. okay, if you have questions. Of course, if you have questions on this other stuff, I'm happy to field those too. Mm -hmm. So this is, the, this is just very simple. You just subscribe right here. Then uh, I'm going to get, I process all notifications myself. So if you do it at 2 in the morning, you're not going to get an instant notification. When I get up in the morning, then I'm going to process give you a subscription status, send you a notification email, Dropbox folder link with instructions. You're going to write me for your threat assessment information. That's what the instructions say to do. Entitle your email, threat assessment information, and send it to me. Tell me your home state, and I'm going to send you that information. If you give me your, your permission to share your contact information with other members, there's over 200 families in the group, you give me that permission right there at the initial, and then I'm going to send you the whole package. You're going to get a survival group info notification email, four survival group programs, phone numbers. You can call Rebecca and talk to her on the phone. She's the survival group leader of the LLC board for the primary group. Mm -hmm. You can become a LLC board member. There's different programs and I'm happy to help you uh, get connected with Rebecca or Linda has a group along the Texas, New Mexico border. Chris and uh, Ken have groups that are in the Ozarks on the Missouri side of the line. Mm -hmm. So if you want a newsletter program, and you know you're not sure you just want a two buck a month I'm happy to help you there you wake up then you have to just use this upgrade button mm -hmm. 25 plus 25 is 50 that's pretty much the way that it works and then uh, same thing with the christian program you just want a newsletter you wake up and you go hey i want some personal tutoring mm -hmm. you just click this then i'm going to upgrade your status description status then when you write me questions your status shows up right in front of my face and i know who you are the program you have and uh, i answer your questions every morning from the special email account. See this email, you guys can write me at this email address, but the email address that you write me to as a subscriber is different. And that's where I spend most of my time answering mm -hmm. questions and uh, putting together presentations that would like the one I, that made me a little bit late. I'm sorry about that, Crystal. Oh, to okay. this, uh, <laughs> that, but that, that's answering for a Christian, a brand new Christian subscriber, you see. so. That's what, I, that's what I do. That's what I do every day. This is how you subscribe right here. It's real simple. You want to donate to the research. You want a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, numbered, autographed, copied, copy. I'm happy to ship to you. I'll pay for the shipping and click on that button. That's right there. So on the uh, uh, survival group, if somebody subscribes and, and becomes a member of the, of the survival group, is, are they, is it for one person or is it for them and their family? It, what, what does that cover? The like subscription, let's say, yeah. one person subscribes to me for $50 a year. It's $50 per year, 25 of that's for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. And then 25 for that is for me to send you your threat assessment. It's to, or send, to send me, so I have extra work. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to want your survival group info, and I'm going to help you get connected. I'm going to introduce you to the group. That's what that covers. The, once you get your hands on the survival group info notification email, you're going to call Rebecca, and then you're going to get information on her program. Okay. You're going to talk to Linda and get information on her program. They have, um, they have people that are investor types that get the deluxe program. They have people that are um, like gardeners like you. Mm -hmm. They don't have money, but they have ability. So mm -hmm. you talk with Rebecca, and then you work out a plan that fits you based on your available resources. I mean, if you have absolutely no resources and absolutely no uh, skills, expertise in anything, then you're, you're probably going to be denied as being a member. But if, you, if you can financially support or you can support with your expertise, what, what Rebecca is trying to do and why I encourage her to do is to build a group that represents the cross-section of our society, a team of doctors, a team a military contingent to protect the group, and builders, masons, carpenters, mm -hmm. caregivers, and uh, gardeners, 
people, uh, hydroponics people, uh, mm -hmm. people that know how to, to grow fish inside of tanks, inside the cavern and food. They do all kinds of different things as a team, you see. Mm -hmm. So depending on your skill set and your abilities then, and your resources, then you're going to talk to Rebecca and Linda and then decide which of the groups is best for you. Mm -hmm. And all I want is your first name, your email address, and your home state location to give your threat assessment information. Mm -hmm. Save all of your uh, technical, personal information, expertise for Rebecca, Linda, your group members, people. Mm -hmm right where, where you join. So I'm just getting you guys connected and then you guys take it from there. Then I'm available. If you want to write me an email and you have a question, then I'm happy to answer it for you. But day-to-day -day survivor group activities, I'm not involved in. Mm -hmm. It would be impossible for me to do everything that I'm doing. Oh yeah. People up and to be able to do that. That's where Rebecca and Linda, they're, they're the experts, way more of an expert in the survival mm -hmm. department. So, but you will be sounding the, the the alarm. You will be watching the the events taking place, following the data, and you'll be sending out information saying, "Hey guys, I really feel like it's time to move to your safe zones." And You're going to know of, in, in yeah. advance where the opportunity windows are, and what the threat levels are. And my advice, if you have the resources, is to move away from the coast right now. Mm -hmm. If you can relocate your job and get a job on the North American Craton in the central part of the United States, Missouri or Arkansas, then that's what you should be doing. Get mm -hmm. out of your houses, house or houses, investments that are on the coast out here and then get that. Any money that you have in paper needs to be in survival supplies, needs to be in, in silver and mm -hmm. things like that, right? So I'm gonna give you that kind of advice and Rebecca's gonna give you that kind of advice so that you can devise your best survival strategy. So whenever you have a question or something like that, all you have to do is write me mm -hmm. at, the, at the, the email address, at the, uh, the special email address. And then that's what I do every morning when I wake up is go through and answer all those questions. Mm -hmm. And then um, some things I answer, some things I'll say, hey, you need to talk to Rebecca about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely feel uh, I've, I've been I follow different people about this subject and I found one um video by somebody and I don't remember their name and it was somebody random who I don't usually follow but he did a breakdown of um, all the symbols involved and even the periodic table how it shows that um, this planet his assessment is that it's going to be here in July of 2021 that was his triangulation of all these different aspects that he was looking at which i thought was interesting as well um that would make it a summertime event or based on your calculations how do you right, so right? my date is may the 20th 2021 okay. at the moment but that's only a three degree differential from my may so we picked this one within hours we hit this one right here the 7.5 mm -hmm. papua on the 15th then I got the data from the backside line. I was able to determine the number of seconds in a half cycle. I was able to make the projection forward to make this prediction. And this is the way it looks. The thing to realize, this could be the crossing date. Yeah. Because uh, in, previous e in previous emails, in previous newsletters, particularly for uh, um, Delilah, then I, I showed them how we figured the May 20th date, how we know the period period and our feeling positions and how we figured that date mm -hmm. that the 1.6 million mile segment of space but that could be off by three uh, you know three days it mm -hmm. could be possibly mm -hmm. so my advice is for you to prepare prepare for every may mm -hmm. around these dates and it's going to happen in the month of may we know that for certain mm -hmm. but the slowing orbital velocity makes it removes uh Certainty. Yeah, yeah, from the equation. So it's a okay. gi giant quadratic equation. Mm -hmm. We figured out, but we have missing coefficients. And so we know the month, we know about the day, and we don't know the precise year when it's going to happen. This is the way mm -hmm. it looks right now, but this, but it could change. And yes, I'm the one that's going to be uh, giving you the weekly reports, and you want your name on the, the uh, survival group list, like the USA survival group list, mm -hmm. where I'm sending you new group member notifications then as we're getting closer, you're going to start getting different kinds of notifications mm -hmm. about the different threat levels and things of, that we foresee that's going to happen. That just hasn't happened yet. Whenever that does happen, that'll be happening in the uh, springtime, in the spring of, it's going to begin in the spring of 2020 coming up. Mm -hmm. so having your name on that list, it's only $50 a year and you get a newsletter subscription and then you're, you're for sure going to get 
information from me before the mm -hmm. crack hits the fan. So that makes me ask another question because now I, my perspective is, and I'm somebody, like I said at the beginning of this interview, that I watch the sky. I've been watching the sky my entire life. I just come from a world of, you know, I, I grew up mainly in Italy and the Italians are very big gardeners and they believe in watching the sky to know when it rains, when the sun is good. So it, my father taught me how to navigate with, with, with the stars. Um, and so it, it just, makes sense to me to always have an eye on this on the sky and things don't look right to me but once i heard uh, it almost seems like the north star is further south than it's supposed to be um in the sky right now i also keep seeing these cloud formations that are very different now you once said uh you can't see it by just looking out into the sky but i wonder if we are seeing perturbations in our atmosphere in the upper levels of our atmosphere that are showing up as these consistent kind of they almost look like clouds that they're way way up there in our atmosphere you can see it but it's a pretty it's a formation of clouds that looks the same every time it comes through and it's been doing and i've been watching this for years now as well and i wonder what do you think do you think we can see it do we do you think there are signs that are visible that we can see with the naked eye as we see? Definitely signs. What you were describing previously is a sun dog. Okay. It's, ca it's caused by water crystals that are in the atmosphere. You get mm -hmm. the halo around the sun and the moon the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you cannot see the black star by looking at it directly from a ground-based telescope. We know that mm -hmm. for certain. We're not mm -hmm. dealing with a brown dwarf star. That's a, a cold star. Mm -hmm. This is something different. It's likely only two to three kilometers in diameter. It's really small, but it's very powerful, and it maybe has a quarter of the mass of the sun, something like that. Mm -hmm. a, a neutron star that's 10 to 12 kilometers in diameter is twice the mass of our sun. Give you some kind of a of a reference guideline there. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing the, you're seeing strange things happen in the atmosphere because of the black star. So as it was getting closer, it made magnetic portal connection to our planet. Then the northern hemisphere, in particularly in particular, became uh, hotter because of the electromagnetic energy, the electro electromagnetic energy. So mm -hmm. the black star is draining energy from the sun and then redirecting it to us. And the metals and the salts in the Northern hemisphere, you know, most of the magnetite, most of the, uh, I mean, metals are concentrated mm -hmm. with the land mass in the Northern hemisphere. And so, and particularly under the North Pole. So you get depletion of the Northern ice sheets is one of the first symptoms. Okay, um, so, so it didn't affect the southern hemisphere, it didn't it affect the Antarctic because they don't have the same concentrations of metals, but it did affect the northern hemisphere. Now, what that did is it caused massive depletion. We had 2000, uh, 2000 to 2007, 2008, 2009, massive depletion as the black star was getting closer. So then you get the smaller amount of ice, which is still the case today, and which get, reduces the amount of polar drip. So that drip is required to keep the ocean conveyor going. The ocean conveyor is based upon hot water at, trapped at the, I mean, at the equator being pushed north by the drip and the cold water coming south. Mm -hmm. When you reduce that drip, then you get record hot water stuck at the, at the center of our planet, which is the case right now. Okay. So that's what's leading, that's what's helping the uh, formation of all these storms that you're seeing. You see mm -hmm. six and eight named storms forming at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of breaking these kind of records because it's record hot water trapped there. So the Earth, seeing that it cannot maintain equilibrium, it uses a different method. That method is the polar vortex phenomenon. So the ocean conveyor was broken in 2010. The polar vortex phenomenon kicked off in 2012. So now the jet stream, our Arctic Oscillation, pushes mm -hmm. the jet really far south and it breaks off these low pressure areas that are of Arctic cold air. And so people think we're going to a ice age mini ice age mm -hmm. well really not the earth mm -hmm. is sending you can't use the water the oceans to to keep equilibrium anymore so because the ocean conveyor is broken so it's sending these cold air this cold air south and it's breaking off the high pressure areas <laughs> above the jet stream and they go north and then alaska has a record warm arctic has record warm record we have permafrost in russia that's been there for thousands thousands of years it's melting now yeah and mm -hmm. it's because of the hot air that the earth is sending north above the jet stream. So with you mm -hmm. and you have these hot and cold air masses 
coming together, then you're going to get weather strangeness. You get super storms. You get these big giant dust storms that are happening in Arizona. Even they're happening over mm -hmm. in the Middle East, right? So the weather strangeness that you're seeing is caused by the scenario that I just described to you: the Earth using these different air masses from the jet stream, breaking them off, sending them where they hadn't. Before 2012, nothing like that ever happened. And huge lightning storms, and that must be from the magnetic uh, portal connection, all this magnetism being built up and stirred up around our planet. When you all think the, 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 yeah. the hot, the higher the what the temperatures go, the higher the temperatures go, and the more moisture you have in the atmosphere, the more of that uh, condensation that you have around the particles, and then the rain starts, and then you have separation of electrons, mm -hmm. and you have this piling up of electrons that are separated and then you get the lightning strikes okay. because the for those forces are always trying to be neutral so mm -hmm. whenever the rain starts that's whenever in the thunderstorm it's the separation it's the creation of these highly charged ionic clouds that create the phenomenon in the first place mm -hmm. so in our newsletter we cover that we cover all those earth changes every week mm -hmm. and what i what the pattern that i see is more and more people being killed by lightning mm -hmm. I mean, hundreds and thousands of people and hundreds of cattle and sheep getting, being killed at the same uh, the same time, the same event. Mm -hmm. I saw just recently an article, all the cows fell on the same their same side down mm -hmm. a fence. It oh, was wow. just amazing. But in India particularly, we have high concentrations of people and high concentrations of cows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, you're seeing more and more people getting killed by lightning because particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, then we're seeing an increase of these storms, the super storms, mm -hmm. the cloudiness. There's more and more lightning strikes that are happening all the time. And it's because of the weather strangeness, strangeness and it's connected to the black star. Even mm -hmm. the, 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 the political view that we have to do something about earth changes, they're trying to tell you it's done by mankind, but yeah. it's not. It's caused by the black star. But you can hear the scream getting louder and louder and louder if it, mm -hmm. As the black star is getting closer and closer and closer, their screams are going to be louder, even though they're blaming it on you. Mm -hmm. It's really the black star that's doing it. So we see signs that, that the weather's testifying in, in the light, lightning strikes. It's testifying. And through the mouths of these people that are talking about the earth changes, this Greta mm -hmm. gal, that they're, this little kid that they're using, yeah. trying to influence the, the mm -hmm. uh, politics. Oh. Poster uh, child, yeah, right. literally, literally their but poster child. the fact child. that they needed somebody like that to be a poster child tells you they're aware of the mm -hmm. changes that are taking place and the dangers, and that's associated with the black star. They're just not, they just don't see the black star. Mm. So, but now that you do, you can watch the news and see through the smoke screen of what's happening. I recommend former uh, Gary uh, Allen, uh, former Congressman Gary Allen's book, Nunder Call a Conspiracy. A copy's in the Dropbox folder for you, but you can Google it and get the PDF. It's a real thin book. Chapter three is going to describe the money manipulators, the House of Rothschild, the power structure and everything. And he's going to talk, he's going to teach you right in the beginning about seeing through the smoke screen. Okay. About how they hide the child, the cart and the donkey right in plain sight, right in front of you. Uh -huh. And then you'll be able to watch the news like I do and see through exactly and see what they're really doing behind the scenes because mm -hmm. they're telegraphing to us what's happening yeah and, and just like you said even the uh, the murals on the walls in the airport there at denver have entire depiction of what will will happen and that's going I've to seen, happen yeah that's going to happen and i've mm -hmm. seen reports on on those murals and what they're showing and that entire story as well which is very fascinating that they always but actually always state what is going on but because we don't know right we're kept ignorant we can't see through the veil of, of what they're actually saying the movies are testifying to it they're right all these productions of, of movies that are showing the waves the huge tidal waves coming through and all these different earth changes that are going to affect us so just to kind of wrap this all up what do you see so i guess some people won't be raptured and some will be left behind and um they will to hopefully go to safe zones and survive if they hear this message and hopefully they will and then from there what does the next stage look like what does it look like for christians also trying to 
um, or, or those who obviously realized they weren't really Christian, Christian and now they're going right. to reconcile with their God, I guess, after the fact. And uh, what does it look like in the years after? What is our mission? What is our responsibility at this point going forward? Because then okay. there will be the second coming to make future generations aware of. For those who survive it, they will feel that responsibility, hopefully, understanding okay. what happened. I think I understand what you're asking. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the thing to realize is that there are going to be no more Christians on the earth after this event mm -hmm. because we're all going to be taken every single one of us there's going to be no more there's not going to be another preacher on the planet to preach the gospel one mm -hmm. that has the holy spirit and dwell in their body like he's in my body mm -hmm. to be able to convey to you the message of truth and then you receive the holy spirit that will not be possible so we're going to be del delivered like a sealed letter if you understand the greek that's exactly what it's saying like a sealed letter we're delivered by the holy spirit then the Holy Spirit comes back down. This is the thread I was telling you about. And mm -hmm. Elijah is standing there on the banks of the Jordan River. And the, the Holy Spirit comes down on him, just like it did back on Christ, back at mm -hmm. the uh, Jordan River. And then he begins preaching the gospel of the kingdom again, just like John the Baptist did at the beginning. And the kingdom of God will be established between the river Egypt and Euphrates. Okay. That All those prophecy things, the temple's going to be rebuilt, the gospel of the kingdom. So whenever the, the preacher comes, to your town, he won't be preaching our gospel message. He's going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You're going to be invited to become a kingdom disciple like Peter, John, and James, a priest to give intercession for everybody in heaven. Say, we're in the Lamb. Everybody on the Sea of Glass, Peter, John, and James, everybody that's about to go through this tri great tribulation, they're all on the Sea of Glass. They intercede for everybody in heaven who's coming to the Lamb. They're the priests, the intercessors. Okay. So God's going to gather the late rains intercessor, intercessor bride through this period that's coming up. That's what the people left on earth are going to be working towards. The people that are left behind could live to be a thousand years old or more. The, the world's going to change. Okay, okay, so you're saying that the people left behind will actually be the people that are still the witnesses to the event on the second, well, second coming, when the second coming comes around. Right. They well, witnessed the first event. So to speak is that what you're what you're thinking there some of them that are alive and remain after we're gone could possibly live to the end of the age and testify then too it's possible mm -hmm. but if they obey the gospel of the kingdom they won't live to the end of the age <clears throat> everybody that obeys the gospel of the kingdom is murdered if you ask me about a rapture at the end of the age there is no rapture at the end of the age okay it, because everybody that's what christ says he says that they will kill you matthew 24 verse 9 that the last person that obeys the gospel of the kingdom is going to be killed during the great tribulation. That's what the Antichrist is going to do. There's going to be no, there's going to be nobody else on the planet to preach the gospel of the kingdom either. That's when the, country, the, the countries, nations are going to be filled with Satan's children. The two witnesses are going to come back and testify to their disobedient children. Those two witnesses are going to be Adam and Eve. They have the same powers as Moses and Elijah, who are skins for, guess who? Adam and Eve. Hmm. Adam and Eve are the skins of David and Bathsheba. They're hmm. the skins of Abraham and Sarah. Adam and Eve are the two witnesses of Zechariah chapter 11, start at verse 4, with that the two candlesticks and the two um, olive trees. They're the two olive trees that come again and again and again. Everybody else comes once. Adam and Eve, they're the, the witnesses from the garden that have no belly button. They were formed. Hmm. They are the ones that come back to testify as Abraham and Sarah, as David and Bathsheba, as John the Baptist is an incarnation of mm -hmm. skin of Adam. Mm -hmm. I know how crazy that sounds, mm -hmm. but that's why there's none greater than John the Baptist, mm -hmm. because he's Adam. He's, he was the first man, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at that testimony and you realize the Lord God, Christ, is the one that formed him in the garden, then you'll realize that Adam, John the Baptist, is testifying about the Lord God that made him in the garden and Jesus Christ is the Lord God testifying about his son Adam that he created the son of God Luke chapter 3 verse 38 hmm. he's the only son of God in this universe everybody else are members of Adam's body that's what I was writing about this top featured article that I'm about to write for the first newsletter ties all that together helps you go back to the infinite realm see yourself see Christ for who he really is the word of God he's one with God right now in the infinite realm He's right mm -hmm. there. He does have no need of being redeemed of anything. No mm -hmm. need of being raised from the dead. Heaven is an incarnation. Heaven mm -hmm. incarnate is the Lamb of God that stands in the center of the throne. The Lamb of God in heaven of this realm incarnated on the earth is Jesus Christ. That's why John called him the Lamb of God. 
He's heaven incarnate. That's here. He was raised above all the heavens and seated in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man, not a human man. Those three realms are a spirit, blood, and water realm that are becoming one and being restored, just like heavens, heaven, and earth are becoming one. All that becomes one again and goes back to the infinite realm where Adam stands up because he, he was murdered in the infinite realm and all of us are members of his body. We're all being restored. So Adam's like Humpty Dumpty. Mm. We're the members <laughs> of his body and we're being rebuilt, restored one member at a time. From Adam's so, body here, we become Christ's member, body member there and then we go back to the infinite realm. Mm -hmm. where now we I'm going gonna, gonna to go into speculation zone with you just a little bit just to see where you stand with this. Um, okay. Where do you think this alien agenda falls in this whole conversation? The, the, you know, the Anunnaki, the, the whole... Okay alien agenda that's being you know you know i know i'm sure you've heard it and and mm -hmm. but, the propaganda i also know the truth right. about it happy to well, share yeah. it with you yes okay the uh if whenever you're reading scripture in genesis 1 start at 26 then you're going to see that there are six day people there they're mm -hmm. made male and female mm -hmm. well those people like the chinese people you, you ever realize you ever notice that all the chinese people are rh positive exclusive aborigine mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. native american indians there are masses of people, races that are every single one of them are RH positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the aliens that are out in space are kin to them. They're like cousins. Okay. They were created and they've been evolving. They're reptilian races. So they have kind of that truth mixed in there. Amphibian races before them. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions and millions and millions of years they've been around. They're the ones, whenever the, the uh, spaceship, whenever the chariot of fire came down and picked up Elijah, mm -hmm. he took them to heaven. Because that was his sons. This was Adam in a skin of the prophet Elijah, taken back to heaven where he's standing as the candlestick. Okay, he's the one that didn't have to see death. Just like, because he re represents and testifies for all the angels. Just like Eve, Moses is a skin for Eve. Moses and Noah are both skins, but Noah, uh, Eve testifies for all the living. Mm. Men, Eve, Elijah, angels. The, your, your superior angel half is in the heavens right now with nose pushed against the veil, wondering about you because you're going to be reunited with your angel half to be made an immortal soul. You need an angel and a man. You put the woman back inside the man, take the man and put him back inside the angel, and you have an immortal soul that Adam was created in Genesis 2-7. You're an immortal soul if you obeyed the gospel already, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're ambassadors sent from heaven, from Christ, ambassadors for God right here and sent to a strange nation because our mm -hmm. true abode is in heaven right now. So these, these uh, reptilian what's flying around in these spaceships, they've been here a long time. They're custodians. They were given instructions by Adam long, long time ago before he was killed, before Satan finally wiped him out that he was coming again. So, they know that whenever John the Baptist came, they know that that was their father that came again. They've been waiting for him to come, and they know that he got killed. So the experimentation that you see the going on with the reproductive systems of animals and men mm -hmm. is happening because the sons from space are trying to make a host body for their father, Adam, in case he comes again and gets killed because they're, they're like children. Mm -hmm. And they're innocent, and they're scared, and they're trying to make it. They're real smart. They've been around long long time they, they don't live 100 years like us or 70 years they live a long time mm -hmm. so they are far advanced they could destroy this planet in a split second if they wanted to that that's they're not bad guys they're good guys mm -hmm. and whenever this calamity happens they're the ones going to clean up the the mess from the nuclear power plants they're mm -hmm. going to help elijah in the restoration of all things like we help elijah from heaven because satan and his uh cohorts are about to be chained well, those heavenly places have to be occupied, and that's why God raised us up. We're going to occupy those heavenly places. So everything that Elijah does is going to be with our help on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as mm -hmm. it is in heaven. We're being restored in heaven, and the earth is being restored. So Elijah waves his hand and does this, but we're the ones that are helping him from heaven mm -hmm. okay, in the restoration of all things. Okay, mm -hmm. And these sons from space, this is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Whenever the kingdom is established, then Israel is going to recognize that the prophet Elijah is really David and there he's going to be put on the, on the throne. And then everybody's going to realize eventually that this is, this is just another skin for their father from the beginning. 
and then the sons from space are going to be called down. He's going to call them down from space, and right in front of the whole world, right on CNN cameras and everything, they're mm -hmm. going to come down in their spaceships, and they're going to walk out, and they're going to they're going to go up, approach his throne, and he's going to stand and meet them, and then the son is going to put the representative is going to put his head on his shoulder and cry like a baby because they've been waiting for this for so long. And mm. then everybody's going to see the truth that we're all connected, that these have been here for millions of years, that of, and what our true purpose is. The king is going to be the king of Israel. That's going to become the king of this planet. Everybody's going to realize who he is when that in the day. And then the, the Hosts from space, the suns from space are going to come down, and then we're going to realize that we're all one big happy family. That's what's going to help the kingdom to prosper for over 3,000 years. That's, we're going to grow in prosperity. This world is going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. People mm -hmm. are going to be going out into the woods and just sleeping in the woods and not be scared of nothing. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any mosquitoes. There's not going to be any chiggers. There's not going to be none of that, mm -hmm. right, until the very end of the age. Because this uh, guy on the throne is going to be killed whenever there's 62 weeks to go, just like Daniel says. Mm -hmm. He's going to be killed. And maybe I don't need to go into the full detail of how I see things, but end time prophecy is going to be fulfilled. And then everything's going to be turned around. Everybody obeying the gospel of the kingdom is going to be murdered. Satan's guys are going to be left, right? And their sons from space are still going to be there serving their father. But they're going to be holding their tongues and letting everything go because this is God's plan. And then mm -hmm. everything's done. We're going to come back with Christ at his second coming. See, the second coming you're describing is the prophetic coming that is visible. We're part of the coming that is invisible. We're the mystery coming. Paul describes 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. Okay. Okay, so at the end of the age, we return with Christ and Peter, John, and James, the bride. They go through Revelation 19, start at 5, through the... Marriage Supper of the Lamb. They get new garments. They're, they're all dudded up. We're all dudded up. The sky opens up. <clears throat> we come with Christ at the end time. The elect, the, uh, the holy ones that are described coming with Christ, that's us. We're there. And then we help gather those who obey the eternal gospel from Revelation 6, 14, no, 14, 6. They obey the eternal gospel, and then they become citizens of heaven. So we assist in them making the transition from this earth to heaven. And then that's the people that, it's the citizens of heaven that Peter, John, and James give intercession for Why we are members of the Lamb's body judging the world and the angels. That's how at, it's going to happen. At the that point, Anunnaki heaven, and all that are all good guys. You're looking at propaganda that they're the yeah. bad guys, right? That's and heaven, heaven at that point will be on earth. So when you say heaven, it almost is like a hologram that will overimpose itself on our earth and create a whole new matrix of our maybe, earth. Maybe that's the topic of another, of, of another yeah. show because it's pretty yeah. deep. But the way that it works is there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So you okay. go to Ezekiel, uh, let's see, Ezekiel 37, start at verse 24. You'll see that David rules forever. Hmm. The first time he rules, Ezekiel 34 started at 23. That's where he is installed as the prince, quote unquote mm -hmm. prince, but then he's going to be removed. Mm -hmm. You're going to see 12 uses of the term desolation until you get to the bones of Ezekiel 37. After that, when you start at 24, then mm -hmm. you're going to see that covenant that they make is forever. And okay. David, the king, rules forever. That's in the new heaven. The new earth, I should say, of Revelation 21. So mm -hmm. there is a new earth. Death is thrown away. People no longer die to go to heaven. Jacob's ladder is reinstituted. I describe all this in my book, The Mystery Explained. They, Jacob's ladder runs from its point there at Mount Moriah mm -hmm. to the sea of glass in heaven. Whenever the, the, members, of the uh, members of the prophetic kingdom bride that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom, when they're fully mature, they've served David all this time. They don't die anymore. Mm -hmm. They walk up, they ascend at the same time, simultaneously, their angel half is descending from the invisible sea that's behind the throne, and then they are joined together at the marriage supper of the Lamb so that they can join us in Christ. The difference is those who are obeying the gospel of the kingdom are going to join us in the Lamb through works. Mm -hmm. We become members of the Lamb's body by obeying the gospel by God's grace through faith without works. Mm -hmm. You see? So the difference and is... God is going to show the heavenly authorities, these mighty angels, the difference between how he deals with us through grace 
and the things that he gives us and the, the way that he deals with Israel and everybody coming by works. And he's going to prove that all of the works of mankind and the angels combined do not equal God's grace. Hmm. That's the end yeah. story when we get to the very end. So there are different ways that you get there. I, I'd explain that into my book, in my book. And um, so we're going to watch everything that happens during the day of the Lord from heaven and assist. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the age, the final number of the people that of the kingdom bride, they're going to be on that sea of glass. The last one's going to get there and there were the, the show, the show goes, mm -hmm. there's going to be no more preaching. There's only Satan's people down there on the earth. And then the two witnesses come and just boom, boom, boom. Before you mm -hmm. know it, we're back down here. And then the world is, is uh, <clears throat> emptied so that it can be changed. Everything's going to change. Mm -hmm. The world is just, it's just going to move away. There's no room for it, for what takes its place. Now the world has to be made, the way that the new earth is made in Revelation 21 has to be remade over a thousand times before the situation that you were describing. Mm. So there's going to be a day whenever men are walking around and you don't see their physical bodies anymore. You mm. don't see their spirits anymore. You're only going to see the soul. Yeah. But the earth has to be remade. The environment has to be changed into the soul heaven that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the men that live inside of that will have immortal bodies that will be the soul, the the spirit and the body will be invisible and then through those ages that go into the end of the ages then that soul becomes greater and greater and greater until there is no more spirit and there mm -hmm. is no more body period there's wow. only the living soul that adam started with so the end and the beginning are, are the same thing and i lay that up um i think pretty well in the mystery explained where you get to see the opportunity to get first fix your doctrinal foundation <clears throat> mm -hmm. you see what the difference between grace doctrine and kingdom doctrine is what a member mm -hmm. bought christ body and and the kingdom disciple and then you're able to go backwards into heaven and backwards in the infinite realm and see yourself as a god see yourself mm -hmm. as a heavenly host and then see yourself as a man realizing that there are three witnesses spirit blood and water of the same host it's really really it's almost cool like those um, nesting russian dolls they're all within themselves it's like it's it's a it's a you're a bigger version of the same that's right you're a more a powerful yeah, more powerful version of of your own little human shell is your spiritual body and your ethereal body added to that as well um and you're that's and that's who you are amen even even while you're living that's who you are because that's what how god knows you in in, in your spirit you're doing things that you've already done yeah he asked these one started nine things that are yeah. already done that's what we're doing so the conflicts you had with gods in the infinite realm you are replaying those things those that mm. deceived you in the infinite realm are here deceiving you now hmm. uh, until we get to the ju judgment. It's done. You're either here as a victim or as a perpetrator. Mm. You're standing in the infinite realm right now being judged as a victim or a perpetrator. So the, the victims were members of Christ's body and the perpetrators are members of the antichrist body. Mm. My, mystery of Christ versus the mystery of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Antithesis opposing doctrines mm -hmm. that are taught in the Bible side by side once you realize you see past the smoke screen, then you can mm -hmm. see that Paul is a multidimensional document that's living and that Paul is teaching you the many, many different things in these statements that mm -hmm. he's making. So that's what my book does is help you to see the multidimensional aspects of uh, scripture. Mm -hmm. And once you see it, it's, it's a real life changing thing. Once mm -hmm. you see it, so mm -hmm. I highly recommend that, that, uh, that your viewers view these, that these, uh, videos, That'll make you ready mm -hmm. to, uh, to read my book, The Mystery Explained, with this, how the diagrams work, mm -hmm. the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. And then attached to your notification email, even if you're a $25, you know, two bucks a month newsletter subscriber, you're still going to get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, mm -hmm. the ebook version, right? Mm -hmm. So you can start developing on that. You can start something. You can start working on that mm -hmm. right now. And it's going to give you better understanding in my writing. Because this is my foundation. But a I lot of people, they just want the science. But this mm -hmm. is where my foundation is. So this is going to creep into my work all the time. Go ahead. Yeah. No, and I think, I think that I'll definitely make it um, my next topic of study to look into this. Because I do believe that the word is alive and it's multidimensional. And speaking from all different angles, it's, it only totally takes into uh, account the paradox, right? That is nature of this three-dimensional life, which is multiple things can be 
true simultaneously and from different perspectives, but we may just be looking at one of them or two of them, you know, true. which is, which is fascinating. So um, anyway, I think we can draw to a conclusion. Is there anything else that you wanted to add uh, for my, my audience that you'd like to say before we go? Um, well, the, uh, if you're more interested in Project Black Star mm -hmm. and what's been happening, what's going to happen, then you may want to subscribe to the $25 newsletter program. Then you're going to get my book, The Mystery Explained, for free. You can go to the uh, videos and check that out and then decide which way you want to go. Okay. You know, whether you want to be focused more in, on the Christian side, go this way, or if you want to be more in the Project Black Star and go this way, you want to join the Survivor Group program. Do you want to strengthen yourself, your, your, your foundation, spiritual foundation for your heavenly existence? That's where my money would be, right? Mm -hmm. Or do you want a combination of both? You know, mm -hmm. what is it that you really want? And then I will be available to uh, help you and guide you. And if you want to be in the survival group program, then give your threat assessment information mm -hmm. and um, get the ball rolling for you on that. So mm -hmm. I'm prepared to help you guys, you know, in, in the direction that you want, you will have my email address, you have my ear, uh, and you'll be able to write me your questions. And then your questions and my answers are put together to make articles for the next week's newsletter. So you see your, your name and type, and you see how you're able to help people. You can help manipulate and change the narrative of what I'm doing by the line of questions that you ask. And um, that's, uh, that's what I'm about here at Terrell03.com and the, the um, Project Black Star Investigation and now the, uh, the mystery report. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I want to thank you for taking the time to come on with me today and be a part of my podcast. I've been following, like I said, your research for years now. I really respect the thoroughness of how you go about it, how you're unwilling to speak speculate too much and my analytical side really appreciates that because um, sometimes we just really want to see uh, the truth in plain sight and we want to be able to go back read it ourselves, and see what you're talking about yourself sometimes your scripture references and the way you're looking at things it's a very important perspective I think for those who are Christian and I think for those who just know that something you know you can kind of I think if you're aware, if you're sensing what's going on around you, you can kind of feel that something's happening, something's coming. And in fact, I would say that the re general reaction of people around the world, whether they attribute it to global warming or whatever their fear is rising about, but you can sense that there's a global tension, fear happening around people, with people looking at the situation and saying, something's not right here, something's not making sense. Um, with the earth changes, with everything that's happening. I, I know that a lot of people are looking for answers around that, but they're also looking for answers around um, more spiritual and energetic aspects of their life in this context as well. So I think that you have a lot to offer with everything that you're doing. And I really appreciate your just continue, just how you just continue to plug away at it over the years and i've seen i've watched firsthand some of your predictions not bear out and you have to recalculate retriangulate and refigure things and just your willingness to just keep plugging at it and and sharing the message that you have um with your channel with our black star and uh what you're showing everybody in your research and your work so thank you very much for that. Thank you for making time to come on my channel. To all of my subscribers and viewers, check out Terrell's work. I'm sure you'll find it extremely interesting. Um, there's something in there for everybody from the hardcore scientist, uh, numbers person, to the more biblical minded person. And I hope that it uh, speaks to you and maybe answer some of the questions that you may be having around what is going on right now with our planet and our earth. So thank you everybody for joining. And I uh, will see you on the next chat. Have a good one. Bye.